time starting here is the buzzer. Check with it. And, uh, and here I have the 3D view of it that I'm looking. Of course, this is a picture. It's a JPEG. It's not the actual 3D view. I, I just made a screenshot. Uh, this is the, the, the circuit. Yeah, this stage that I'm having here is actually without all of these diodes, uh, but including that 5 volts rail, this 10 kilo. So without any kind of diode that I'm having there, um, and all this thing that I'm having there, it's this circuit that, that you're seeing here. And this thing here, of course, these uh, mm, jumpers are are here in this uh, circuit. And this circuit <coughs> is starting from this diode and all this stuff that you're seeing here, making abstraction of those jumpers because they are, I integrated them uh, per each uh, small module. And uh, yeah, you see, you see, this is how it is. Uh, that's this is the circuit that you're seeing per each. Uh, this is uh, this is having uh, two inputs, signal inputs, a positive and a negative, and a signal out, an output here. And uh, this output is connected to everything. Uh, depending on the jumper, this blue jumper, where I will uh, <coughs> mount it, where I will uh, choose to to, to beep, <laughs> and uh, this is the the input here for this circuit on the bottom, and um, this is how it is, and uh, yeah, uh, the diodes <coughs> are situated, are mounted very strangely on top of the pins of the uh, chips. Uh, they'll sit vertically, like this, you know, vertically up at each uh, pin. So if this is the pin, the diode will stay like that. And uh, it's very weird. I think I did it one time ago, but not at this uh, scale. This is a pretty big, a lot of diodes here, a lot of them. <coughs> I did it with one or two components lifted up like this. This is a bit more harder than uh, what I did before. And also, I have to connect between them, all of them. It's a common line, you see. And here in the middle, fixed in the middle, it's th is this motherfucker here in the middle. And I have to jump this with that and connect it to the other four here and then drag the line as a single uh, output line signal. And from this, from the middle here, let me actually zoom in. So from the middle here is the second one single diode that is inversed than the others. Uh, if you are looking, if we are looking on the circuit diagram, here you see all of them are pointing towards the pin, but this is a pointing is one single diode that is pointing from the pin of the chip towards the circuit here, and that's the <laughs> the logic. Pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I did think a little bit, and I will mount <coughs> the first thing to mount the first diodes. Uh, to mount will be on this chip because it is uh, easier to count them and to actually verify uh, this the entire chip if it's working or not and the rest well it's just uh, duplicating this is what i'm starting here uh, this will be this is one single module uh, by the way this is a sketch what you are seeing here is a sketch to see how everything will fit i didn't know how much space i had to uh, to have so I, I i started from here towards there and, and i i extended like that <laughs> with the chip that's why i'm having too much space white space there and here a lot of uh, writing uh, this uh, board is actually one board but it will be four boards one two three four you see i marked I marked here with the line and I have plenty of space left. So I, this is plenty of space, which is good. It's pretty much like there, not exactly like there, but pretty close. And uh, it will be one, two, three, four, and underneath all this. So this will be one single board and this will be another board underneath here. So it will be pretty big. It will be like my hand, big, <laughs> pretty big, <laughs> what a wicked. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's a very interesting project, I, I may uh, say. Yeah, I can't wait to, to get into testing uh, to see when it's beeping. So all this trouble, all this logic that you see, is only for a fucking buzzer, for a fucking beeping, when it's, when it's reaching zero. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it is a very nice function. I believe it will help on the long run, uh, of the, if, I will, <laughs> if I will even use this uh, device. Uh, I also plan to use um, the batteries uh, on it, so yeah. And I didn't do anything on the one second uh, counter uh, oscillator. Uh, because uh, I was uh, looking on some uh, circuits uh, and I got some help. I asked uh, my, my two friends from UK, from England, and they both gave me quite the same circuit with an uh, oscillator. And I also learned a lesson, <laughs> which I was kind of aware, but not really. <coughs> and I will explain about it when I will, uh, get to it. For now, I commanded some uh, components and they are, yesterday I commanded them from AliExpress and uh, they are coming uh, probably in one month or so. But until then, I will probably make a, a very cheap one second uh, counter made from a resistor and a co capacitor RC uh, with this 7414. So I will choose an, uh, an input and an output from the, uh, this uh, not gate and um, drag some wires from it and use an RC somewhere else probably. And it will be a very very cheap, uh, very easy to make one second and also a switch as well. Uh, that's a bit more complicated. But when I will reach to that stage, I will talk about it more, uh, more elaborate talking. Uh, for now, I will concentrate only on the beeping circuit that we are seeing here and the logic because it is having a, a ton of logic to actually beep when it should beep and not when he wants to beep. Uh, this is the beeper, this is a 12 volts 
what I'm having here. One, this one. So uh, active buzzer. Uh, but I have here, you see, five volts active buzzer. And I also have passive buzzers as well. I am very uncertain which one, if I will use a passive one or, a, or an active one, because an active one will beep as long as the zero is uh, shown. Uh, but a passive buzzer is having a mind of its own. It will beep uh, for a fraction of a second. It will literally uh, beep like this. Beep. And that's it. Doesn't matter how long the zero is staying there. So that's uh, that's a choice. I will have to choose and to decide which one to use. And uh, probably I will choose the active buzzer uh, to actually stay on zero as long as the zero is displayed, pretty much. I didn't really want it to, to buy these passive buzzers. Uh, I got screwed, in a sense. <coughs> and I also didn't know knew about them. Uh, when I bought them, uh, I was thinking they are active, uh, but I was wasn't thinking like like that. You know, uh, uh, I learned the lesson. There are passive and active motherfuckers. Uh, passive it means it needs uh, a driver, and active it means that they have the driver inside them, and you don't have to do anything. Uh, so, but for this you have to build a circuit with five five five. It's a pain in the butt. Uh, but they can run by their own uh, for a very short duration of time. They are beeping a little bit, you know, when when a contact is is made. I will not take this circuit that is here and glue it on the cardboard. No, I will actually have to make it again on the cardboard. I will I will mirror it pretty much. And also this one, but I will have to mirror it four times. This one, I will have to mirror, mirror it only one time. I, will, I should probably, it's a good idea to, to make uh, some tests on a breadboard. After building this, to make a, a very small circuit like this on the breadboard and drag some wires probably from, from there and actually test how everything is working and if it's working. Right, uh, because this is a prototype, I never build it on the breadboard and I am pretty much making it directly on cardboard uh, with the trust that it will work. Trusting Proteus, <laughs> and this is 3D Max. Uh, where is Proteus? Here is Proteus. So trusting Proteus uh, that it will give me a very good uh, result as, as he is uh, thinking from the perspective of uh, that simulator. Yeah, see you later. See you later. Bye-bye. I hope you like it. All right, I made this for... Uh, drawings for the moment is for this module here with these four guys and uh, I wanted to show you that's it uh, I made a drawing I calculated everything uh, you can see uh, some very fine lines this 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 you see this long lines on the length of this cardboard and they are called guidance lines to be everything the same to maintain everything the same although some uh, components are uh, <coughs> are still made by hand uh, without any guidance this transistor this uh, led by eye you know without and uh, yeah pretty much is done the the layout is done i have to make the layout for this or better said for this to, to actually put it on the final cardboard um this cardboard as you can see you, you see the difference here uh, uh, this one is having a little bit of space there and I leave plenty of space here. Uh, this little space here is, it's a margin of uh, tolerance because I have this long line here and I want a space between this uh, wire to the um, pads that I'm having there. And it will be also a positive line. Uh, this uh, pad, it will be positive link to positive wire. And uh, I'm having a little bit of, you see, a distance, a, a tolerance, a distance between that wire and uh, when everything will start to actually. And uh, here it will be glue and this will be glued to that uh, even if it's not uh, even, <laughs> if, if it's a little bit uh, less here and more here, it's good enough. It will stick uh, just fine. And um, remember, this is a prototype. <laughs> and uh, yeah, pretty much this uh, it will look like. And it's pretty long. <laughs> it's pretty long. All right, very quick update. Uh, I managed to mirror this circuit here on the actual cardboard that I will use. It's done. But there it is. And it is fitting quite well with, uh, with the other one in line. And this other one is fitting with the rest of the board there. And uh, the plan is to make this first that you create and then to use a breadboard and make only one uh, gate or arrangement that I'm having here module <coughs> to make it on a breadboard connect from here to the breadboard to this mod module there actually I will use this as an example so I will use uh, I will connect uh, from here to there and from here to there to this chip uh, the first one and see if uh, uncheck this way if everything is working as it should be it should be working without any problems but yeah, electronics is full of errors. Uh, you have to deal with them, you have to learn them, it's an entire process, it's very frustrating, you have to deal with frustrations, get over them and push it, push it forward, because it will work. I'm very confident it will work. All right, that's it for this um, update here. Bye-bye. All right, I made the circuit. It's uh, this circuit here, you see? So only this part here is the buzzer circuit. And uh, I linked everything. Why did, you, why did you stop right now? Ah, the, the negative wire come off. Yeah, that. So, <laughs> when I'm filming, <laughs> uh, so uh, I did some very, very crude experiment, experimentation to check if uh, this module here is working. And uh, originally, with the values that I'm having here, meaning this 10 kilo there and this 10 kilo here, uh, these two values, it didn't work with those two resistors. Why? First of all, uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, this is here. Uh, it should have been a 10 kilo, but the LED that I used is a very used 
extremely used LED, very old, it's scrapped. It, it is totally scrapped. I have brand new LEDs, of course, uh, but I want to use everything that I have scrapped. It's a uh, some sort of challenge for me to do everything, and I know I can do it. Uh, it's uh, it's a bit more problematic, but learning the curve of resolving these problems, it it will make you a better, way better electronics than uh, using only brand new stock. You know, <laughs> uh, so yeah, using. Uh, learning to use uh, old scrapped uh, uh, components in general. Uh, I know it's not mm, correct, but for a lot of uh, components it is uh, fine. Not everything. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, integrated circuits. Uh, those I kind of, uh, if something is wrong and I, I check the, the integrated circuit and it is having a function that is wrong, uh, usually I kind of throw them away and uh, disper disperse of them not to see them around me. Because I'm stupid and I'm trying to make it work, <laughs> even knowing that is uh, is damaged. But with this kind of components that, uh, you know, LEDs, resistors, uh, even uh, switches, uh, also diodes that is scrapped as well. This is brand new, the switch. Uh, this is also the buzzer is brand new. But this is totally scrapped. This is a transistor, uh, very old germanium, I, I believe, PNP. Uh, I believe all this uh, cap, uh, metallic cap like this are germanium. But I'm not t totally sure. I'm not totally sure. Maybe there are uh, silicio uh, ones. <laughs> But uh, yeah, um, I even marked there uh, as PMP. So I powered, uh, let me show you the, um, the functionality of this uh, thing that is doing right now, what, what it's doing. Uh, right now it is disconnected, as you can probably see here, this wire, you see, this wire should come, as you can see, is this brown wire from there to there. Uh, and uh, it is coming from there. And when I'm touching the base of the transistor, which is staying up like this, you see, is uh, it is, uh, yeah, you see, it's bent up, it's bent up like that. And when I'm touching it, you can hear it. Of, co of course, it's muffled, the sound is muffled. This is extremely strong buzzer, and it's, beeping like crazy, <coughs> uh, loud, it's extremely loud, uh, when I'm taking out this uh, little paper. So uh, even touching it here is buzzing. When uh, when it's not grounded here, when it's not grounded, this wire, this is the, the wire from the signal, this is the signal wire. And when one of the, let me, and one, when, uh, yeah, no, this, uh, you see, when one of these uh, guys here are grounded, it, uh, it only needs one to, to the ground, uh, it, it will, uh, it will uh, disconnect everything, it will, it will keep it disconnected. And when the, the proper arrangement is correct, so everything here is positive, and only this one is negative, it's shutting off this, and allowing positive to go instead of to the ground, so it's, it's shutting it off, uh, by being positive, negative here, uh, not powering this transistor, so the positive line is going through the LED and through uh, to, the, to the beeper circuit, pretty much, that's the idea, and, and if one of them is negative, uh, the, the power will go to the ground through this transistor, probably, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, also, this guy should be on all the time, and I think it is. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, I check it, I tested it, and it is working as uh, it should. Uh, this is a code. This is uh, like in the programming. This is the code, but uh, with the hardware, with the components right here. So uh, when I'm grounding here, this is the signal. And when I'm grounding it here directly, um, it should beep. It should beep. And when I'm uh, or, uh, and when I'm letting it uh, ungrounded, either floating or to the positive, doesn't matter. Uh, it should not beep like it is right now. But the problem is with the 10 kilo. I have a 10 kilo there. You see that uh, there is the 10 kilo 103. That's the one. Uh, I have already installed uh, that uh, uh, resistor there. And uh, right now it should shut up. It should not beep at all. But if I'm touching, if I'm making the connection here on the base, it is beeping. So this is telling me that uh, this uh, resistor is uh, too weak for the um, uh, base of the, this transistor. So what I need, I need. Uh, so, uh, I need a bigger resistor. And what I did here, I took this 16 kilo, I took a, a bunch of uh, resistors, uh, I can show you here, you see? And I tested it uh, and lowered it down until I reached this 16. With 20 kilo, it didn't work in uh, in series with that, uh, pretty much is in series with that resistor. So right here, if I'm putting this 16 kilo, so 16 plus uh, 10 is 26, 25, something like that, 26. So if I'm putting this resistor here, it is not beeping. But if I'm touching, you see? So uh, let me actually take out this to actually hear it louder, because it is very loud. Huh. I didn't hear this. Yeah, it's kind of this. Uh, I believe even so, okay. So this, I didn't take out this little uh, uh, paper. So this 16 kilo is still uh, low. It's still low. So I'll go higher now and put back the 20 kilo here. And let's hear. Let's see how it's working right now. The 20 kilo. It shouldn't. We shouldn't hear anything. That's the idea. Yeah, I believe this is it. And now when I'm going. Yeah, it's prob probably I'm touching here and. Uh, yeah, it's getting a little bit of buzzing, which is okay. You see? Yeah. Oh, let's see if I can remove the buzzing even higher. So this is 20. Uh, here are my this is the other boxes. I have four boxes. You see, another two there. And uh, so 20 kilo here. Let's see, wait 24. Maybe that buzzing will disappear. It's good that uh, it's happening this kind of error. So this is tweaking. Uh, this is me tweaking the shit out of it. Uh, I was aware I would have problems, but I was confident I will manage to, to repair them. So <laughs> because the chip is quite uh, simplistic. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So I, I like how it's sounding. So it's uh, no, I don't like how it's sounding. It's still buzzing like that. Huh, shit. Okay, then even higher, 24. Uh, 30. 30. It's, it's, uh, it's looking like it's uh, receiving some sort of uh, uh, radio signal. <laughs> that buzzing. It's kind of interesting, that buzzing. I don't mind. I really don't mind, but it should be clear. I believe this is it. Huh? Yeah, but uh, 
No, it's, it's still buzzing. Fucking hell. No, it's very, it's very weak with this. So somewhere around uh, 20 then. Not buzzing, I have to resolve it. Oh, uh, but for now, for now, so I can't resolve it uh, like this for some reason, I don't know why. Um, I would have to investigate further, probably it needs, uh, it needs, so this is with 20, and it's very loud, it's very good. Okay, uh, I can either put a resistor here or change that one with the proper value. So I'm having a, so now it will dip, and it shouldn't dip with that value there. So I will change that <coughs> resistor. Now it's 10 kilo, plus 20, so I will have to put there at 30 kilo. And uh, how do it off camera? Or I will do it right now? Mm, I don't know, I don't know, let's see. So 39 kilo, 33, 30 is the only one. 32 and 33, alright, 33 there. And uh, let's see, it's a brand new one. I rarely use this, the values that I'm having here. Uh, find this couple. Yeah, this should do it. Alright. Alright. I'm just going to power. I will link this back up here because this should be good. Oh, or not. Leave it for testing. And, uh, <laughs> Alright. And this is it. That 10 kilo. It's here. And. I'm very curious what can be the explanation for that uh, noise that I'm hearing. Uh, I'm definitely not an audio guy. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> I'm not into audio. So, someone that, that uh, is really knowing how to deal with audio stuff can actually tell me. So, this is a 33 kilo. And it should be fine now with this guy here. Uh, okay. So, that. Uh, okay, positive. And it shouldn't. Oh, fucker. Huh. It should have worked, and it doesn't. Hmm. Then. It doesn't work like that. So, it needs. Here on the wire, it needs. Huh. So, it doesn't. Care what is sitting there, probably. I have to test that guy. Yeah, I will solve the problem and I will come back. Right. I tested with 20 kilos, with 15 kilos, and uh, I got very, very strange results. And from everything, uh, only with this 16 kilo it worked, and only with this one um, percent, uh, one percent resistors. <coughs> and as you can hear, nothing is hearing. But if I'm touching the ground here, it's working perfectly, and it's very extremely quiet right now. It's not buzzing. Before, my impression is that before, do you hear it? If I'm touching the base of the transistor is uh, creating this noise uh also no on this on this side is not creating the noise but only here and it doesn't work with that with only this uh, resistor here it really needs another resistor here from this point uh, probably because this is catching some uh, uh, positive charge especially when it's floating like this so uh, usually it will be actually connected to the positive like that uh, this signal wire that is coming through this diode here and uh, it's coming it will be connected to positive and only or negative will uh, actually beep. <laughs> so yeah, very interesting. So this is the commutator. Uh, here I'm switching uh, the the power to uh, this buzzer. So even if the signal is coming, nothing will sound. And if I'm switching it on, this LED is powering up, uh, telling me that the circuit is uh, in on position and it's functioning correctly. Yeah, uh, it's good that it's working <laughs> for so, from some miracle. Uh, all right, so this is it. Uh, I will have to cut it and place it correctly, this resistor here, to don't have any kind of... Uh, do not be like this as it is right now. Here is in testing mode. Problem solved, and uh, it's still looking, this resistor is still looking like it's in test mode, <laughs> unfortunately, but I didn't want to cut its legs, so I made, you see, uh, bent, I bent its leg, like uh, like this, and I soldered it there, and here I actually used the entire length of the leg to reach uh, that point, and pretty much that's it, and, and it's working perfectly as it should have been from the beginning, with a little bit of uh, tweaking, only one is receiving the negative is beeping, excellent, extra fucking lente, <laughs> right, see you next time, when I will... Uh, I'll have to start to build these guys here, and uh, now I'm cu curious, I'm very curious how this will work here, from here, if, if the signal from one pin will actually be able to influence, to surge the current, because I need a, a direct path, direct path to, to negative, and if those pins from the chip uh, will actually surge correctly, the, the, directly to the ground, and not through some resistance, and uh, make this uh, thing too sensitive, I'm worrying, I'm thinking on this... Uh, Things. But uh, so, uh, so it's very good until here. I have this uh, issue resolved, this uh, module resolved, and quite beautifully, I may add, exactly as I planned. And this is the first, I didn't even test it on the breadboard. I, I built it directly here and it's working as it should be, as in a simulator, with this minor inconvenience, this uh, little uh, resistor that I had to uh, link to this uh, germanium, probably it's a germanium transistor here. Yeah, well, it's a little bit of, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, tweaking, but it worked. All right, more code. <coughs> Actually, when the, it will not beep like this at all. Uh, only when zero will be <coughs> displayed, it will continuously beeping like this. And when it will number to, to, it will switch to other number, it will go off like it is right now. And only when it's zero, pick, it will signal me that it reached that uh, uh, digit. All right, this is it for this part. I hope you like it, and see you next time. Okay, I am right now at a logical impasse, and also a decision to make, because. I realized something. Uh, I was thinking on this problem actually, but uh, I didn't really give it too much attention. Uh, it was in my mind, 
uh, but I said to myself, yeah, I will resolve it later. And later is now. <laughs> and I realized uh, the active buzzer that I have here, I, I took it out from there. This is the active one. And this is a passive buzzer that is only, it needs a, an outside circuit to actually function. Right now it's only cracking. It's emitting some noise, some cracking noise. Like, you, you will hear it in a second. It's not actually buzzing. It's not creating a buzz. Like, beep, 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 beep. It's not, it's not like that. Um, unfortunately, but it's good enough because, uh, like I said, I have a very strong um, um, problem uh, that I left it to solve it uh, some other time. Uh, let's say I'm switching. So if I'm leaving the jumper here uh, on this module for the first digit on zero to beep, it will count uh, one, two, three, four, five, nine, eight, nine, and zero. And it will beep. This active buzzer will beep, beep, as long as that zero is displayed there. If, the, uh, the, if I'm counting very rarely and the zero is displayed for a longer period of time, like zero and beep, and the, the beep will do will uh, the the buzzer will beep as long as that zero is displayed um and now beep and that's it and this uh, turned to one okay so now the next problem if i will switch the jumper from here to here when this will be zero it will beeping continuously as long as this is displaying um a zero right and, uh, beep. Beep, 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 beep. and it will remain in beeping mode until this uh, thing will transform into one especially if it's a very slow um movement like this if it's it's a if it's a very slow speed <coughs> that will be beeping continuously until uh let me actually switch it back everything to zero and when it's starting when it's resetted to zero everything it will also beep <laughs> in continuously until that fucker or that one will, will change so this is a very 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 problem very nasty problem to resolve and i have no idea how to resolve it uh, I, I mean i have an idea here i, I switched to this uh, uh passive uh buzzer that i'm having it right now let me uh, disconnect this. This was the explanation. And uh, let me power it, power this other one. Okay, so uh, <coughs> this is the, the beep. <laughs> uh, the noise that this device is making is making it only once. When it's going to zero, to zero volts, to ground, and when it's re uh, getting the one volt back. That's it, only these two modes. And uh, it, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it is an. Uh, um, it's not very loud, it's very weak noise, but it is creating a, a little bit of noise. And indifferent of how many zeros I have, indifferent of how, where the, uh, indifferent of where the jumper, I will put it, it will stay silent on zero, and only when one change is happening, it will make this uh, noise, a little bit of noise, which is uh, almost imperceptible, uh, but uh, it's almost imperceptible, but it is something, it is something. Uh, so uh, also I have this visual aid, uh, in the same time, it will make the scratch noise, and the lead will blip, you see? So they, they are working uh, together. Uh, I believe this is one solution that I could quickly mount it here. But uh, for now, it will remain like this because it's a quick and dirty and simple solution right now, like I'm having it here. It's not as good as this active one, very loud, very clear, uh, but it is a solution right now. Uh, <coughs> otherwise, I will have to get a bit more complicated and make some weird circuit here to, to make this active one beep uh, like this one. <laughs> you know, but with uh, additional circuitry, which is pretty stupid <laughs> if I can use this one, you know, by itself. It's, it's quite okay with this one alone, as it is. As low uh, noise that, that is making, it's very low noise, very low uh, volume, but it's good enough. Uh, it is enough to attract my attention. Uh, another uh, idea was to change, instead of zero, to change to nine. Or another idea was to make actually a panel to where should beep, this longer beep, uh, this active one that is uh, uh, beeping continuously, as long as the digit is displayed. And... Um, yeah, shit. <laughs> it is getting uh, very quick, quickly, very complicated. And um, my solution here, I believe it's a good one. Like this. <laughs> and that's it. I will uh, think about this problem uh, later, uh, and I will see if I can find a better solution actually using this active one, probably with uh, additional circuitry that I, I, I didn't think about it at all at this point in time, uh, and to make it beep like this one, which is a bit stupid, uh, but it will be louder and clearer with this one instead of uh, this uh, other guy, which is doing some job, but uh, I will think about it. I will think about it. All right, uh, that's it for this part. Uh, I hope you understood my problem. I hope I will resolve it somehow. I have no idea how. I really hope I will, I will resolve it. Yeah, shit. <laughs> I have, although I have plenty of space to add additional uh, circuitry uh, here as well. You see? Yeah, we'll see. Thank you very much and see you later. All right. I only want to show you a little bit of progress. I started to put some uh, pads. Uh, this I finished it already. I started to choose the components. I tested uh, <coughs> all the transistors. They are all the same, the same number, <laughs> the same model. Five. <coughs> uh, five, four, seven. C547. And uh, they're all the same. And I test them with my 
uh, that uh, that uh, transistor tester. Uh, but uh, I I put them together. Um, I had to bend them and uh, and cut this plastic. And everything you see here is manually made uh, from also from scraps <laughs> that I have. Uh, I have a ton of them brand new, but I want to actually use these uh, scrapped ones to get rid of them. And uh, yeah, uh, and the LEDs are all scrapped, as you can see. They have a very very long leg. Uh, these LEDs that you are seeing here are were used, and I uh, I scrap them and put them aside from lighters. You know those lighters with an LED lighter with with an LED, which is not working anymore. This one probably the battery is dead, but that's uh, these are the LEDs. Those LEDs are, are I took them over the years, of course, and collect them and put them aside. And these are the <laughs> the light in the in the lighter. The lighter, of course, is working fine, but uh, and it is almost empty. <laughs> but the light in, uh, the LED inside, I, I scrap it. I, I always collect them uh, because it's uh, it's free. It's a free LED, and uh, <coughs> and yes, I wanted to show you how I prepared there, and how I, on the stage, I reached so far. Uh, this is a piece of cardboard, of course. <laughs> Slowly but surely, I'm uh, building it and making it uh, awesome. And uh, see you later. That's it for this part. Thank you very much. All right, fucking finished this board. All the pads everywhere, uh, everywhere, and. Um, is fully populated with the pads and it took me forever <coughs> it was a little bit too boring to do, build it but uh yeah i like it I like it. it's good it is good and holy shit <laughs> holy shit i made it i managed to mount for now all the components you can see them there as well and uh the resistors two resistors one transistor one led one jumper or pins whatever <coughs> the only thing that i didn't do is uh, wiring. I didn't drag any kind of wire for now. This is how it's looking <coughs> on the other side. And uh, yeah, next is wiring. The thing that I love so much. <laughs> I really love the wiring. I did check every LED uh, with this uh, uh, negative and positive with one kilo here uh, before adding its one kilo there. I should actually check right now with the resistor that it's having already. Let me mount my... Uh, yeah, good, good, good. Now I can take out this one kilo from there and check it like that. That's good. Good. <laughs> and good. Uh, this actually worked, but yeah, when I believe it, yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> Shit. That's why it's good to uh, to check everything. So good, good, bad, and good. Uh, it did worked. Uh, this guy here, uh, but uh, intermittently it worked. Sometimes it, it didn't work, sometimes it worked. Uh, one. And you will, <coughs> I will not be that surprised if this will work after I will take it out from here. So now it's out, and I need one, one kilo back. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, but no, it's dead. Probably it's, it's totally dead now. Yeah, it's busted. <laughs> That's why it's good to test everything. <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't matter how stupid it, uh, it appeared to be. This is, this is a very stupid checking, what I just did. Very, uh, you may think it's not necessary, uh, but uh, see, <laughs> uh, shit appears. See you on the next uh, stage when I will actually link with wires and probably make one single board. These two boards, one as, <laughs> as a single one, exactly as it is here. Okay, all right, all right. See you later. Yeah, all right. A little bit of process. Uh, this is uh, the board. I glued another cardboard because I had a ton of bent pads underneath. So all these pads that you're seeing here, uh, only one is glued. Uh, the rest are bent underneath. And uh, they are a true hazard of uh, connections, of uh, random connections. If I'm dragging wires through over those pads, it's a, it's a disaster. So I, I put a isolating cardboard. I glue it, as you can see, it's, it's two cardboards here. And now I'm dragging the power wires. I already made <coughs> uh, the negative there. Uh, this is another wire. Uh, this is a signal wire uh, that is uh, on this side, but underneath, uh, Connecting uh, where are you? So connecting this pad, th that pad there, there and there. So all these four pads are the negative. You see a sign there, negative, and they are al already connected there. I put a piece of paper uh, because I glue it because uh, the wire is very thin. It, it's quite thin. It, this is the wire that I'm using. This and uh, being so thin and so long is bending in all the places, all around, uh, and it's very easy to catch it and to drag it from there. So from its uh, from, for protection, it's only for protection, not to bend like crazy. I I should have do it here as well. I did it for the most part, but here on the bottom, you see, uh, uh, they are exposed wires. I should do it, but the glue is not catching very well on this paint that I'm having here. So I'm kind of uh, aware of the problem and uh, I will deal with it. <laughs> so uh, now let me show you how I'm catching that. It will not be long. It will be a very, very short uh, video because I already uh, prepared the ends 
uh, the ends of the wire, and I only have to 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 bend them like that, and here as well. I didn't left too much space or too much wire length for the negative, and I kind of for the negative rail, <laughs> and I kind of uh, fight uh, to match to match the the, the wire length. It's it's okay, but it's too short, a little bit too short. So this wire uh, length, I can, uh, yeah, it's it's okay, I suppose, on the back. Yeah, I I, uh, I leave an extra, a little bit extra, uh, you know, length here. And it's actually perfect right now as it is. And uh, this is it. This is how I'm uh, connecting it from underneath on this side. All right, just make a nice beautiful blob of solder. Uh, so the wire is prepared already in the in the end here. So I'm sure it's making proper connections. And uh, this is it for this wire. Uh, all right, uh, let me show you how I'm preparing the next wire and how I'm soldering there. This is nothing. Uh, I I thought well, I said it will be a short one, but I will show you how I'm preparing. I'm doing this for everything, so it's a bit of. Uh, uh, work to do, but uh, it's nothing special. Yes, this soldering, uh, this wire is special. I have some special wire that is already burned. <laughs> that enamel is burned on it. It's from a from transformer or something that was burned, and it's having pockets of uh, of visible uh, enamel missing. So uh, the rest, the majority of the wire is fine. Is uh, is uh, having isolation on it, but there are some pockets that are exposing the <laughs> the copper directly. And it's a you know it's a scrap wire. It's a it's, it's not good to use it uh, one on top of the other because it will it will have a great chance chance of making uh, contacts. Unwanted contacts. So for the power lines that I'm using it right now, it's perfect. So it doesn't intersect anything. It's only connecting A to B, you know, the points, and that's it. Okay, this is it. This is how I'm preparing the, the only the end of the wire because that's the only thing I need to to use. And, and the next one here, yeah. And there. Now, come on up. Hopefully, it will be not too long. Let's see. Yeah, I kind of uh, overdo it with the length. <laughs> yeah, this is very long. But I have a uh, long pads here, and uh, it's it's fine. Okay, actually, it's desirable to have a little bit of bend here. It's very desirable because when the entire board is bending a little bit, this will not act, it will act like a spring, like, you know, and uh, that's very good to have it like that, not perfectly straight. And uh, yeah, there and here. But usually, I am using, I'm not using this uh, method of, of lengthier wire because it's stupid. And I'm cutting the wire exactly perfectly, and it will. Yeah, it's a lesson. Hmm. I'll try to do my best in the future to, to add the springness of the wire, to be sure, you know. And the final link that I'm having here. Now, this is the third one. If I need it a bit more, yeah. Okay, that's good enough. And stop it, insert it, it. This is the last power. Last power wire. Ay, mi carajo. Mi carajo. Mi compañera. Now it's too long here, but I'll do the spring thing like this. It will drag the wire. And also, and also I am, by doing the spring thing, I'm also uh, center the wire to the length you know, that I need here. Let's see how we're ready. Let's see. Okay, it's all good. It's somewhere there. Alright, yes. Two of them there. That's why it's good to have a little bit of surplus. No. Yeah, it's good, it's good. Alright, alright, this is it. Yeah, I should uh, practice more this springness because it's, it is a good uh, thing to, to, to have. Even if it's looking weird like it is right now, I don't care. <laughs> so, let me show you the adding the, the little paper. How I'm doing it. Yeah, put it here. And, uh, and I want it this with it, it here as well. Yeah. Of course, by eye, I, I don't need to be very precise here. I yeah, put it here. This side is actually very quick, it is not taking a lot of time, and it's a safe measure. All right. <coughs> and... Okay. All right. And... Right. Somewhere there, and somewhere here. And voila. Yeah, crystal, crystal, yeah, you, yeah. It's a paper. <laughs> I don't know how to say. I don't, I don't remember the word for paper in Russian. Gruska or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. This is it. Uh, this is me putting the wire. So the positive are linked together. The negative are linked together. We can uh, do a test. A very quick test. And yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, directly on the pins. And they have the resistors, which is good. Yeah, they are letting all. But when the logic, uh, when the logic will come in, uh, selecting the jumper, uh, it will not let all. I hope. <laughs> Uh, but now I'm probably adding directly. Yeah. Right directly. Okay, I will see. I will see. Yeah, probably uh, this. <coughs> yeah, the the transistor will act as a shunt, will surge the the current um, more than the LED. So the current will pass through the transistor. Actually, yeah. Actually, I have two signals here, here and here. Yeah, we will see. So far, so good. So far, so good. But this is a. Uh, yeah. All four LEDs are lifting up. Yeah. From one test. Okay, all right, we will see how it will work. And why not to film when I'm gluing this board to this board? And uh, <coughs> I already prepared here my, my shoe glue. This is the shoe glue. The first thing to do is to close it first, even if it's dripping from here. Because this is a permanent glue that I'm, what I'm doing here is. 
is the ultimate. This is welding cardboard. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Alright, I already dragged the line there. I hope I will not put it in this. No, not like this. That will be uh, <laughs> interesting to put it in this, no? <laughs> Upside down. And now, now is a matter of pressure. You know, and keep everything pressed, pressed down like that. You see, what it? <laughs> what it, motherfucker? Right, so this is how I'm uh, gluing this to cardboards. Well, all my cardboards. <laughs> this is how I'm gluing them, if you're curious. So, voila, I have uh, one cardboard right now. Of course, I have to wait to solidify, to actually glue, to weld, you know, to, be to become one. <laughs> to become one. Only one. Right, this is it. And uh, yeah, a ton of weld. <laughs> there. And this will be glue, glued like that in continuation. Let me actually add it in the view here. So, this will be glued here. Somewhere like that in, in line. Uh, this was a very big module compared with all this integrated circuits that I'm having that are doing 1,000 times more complicated stuff than what this what this is doing here. But uh, it is what it is. Like this. Ah, uh, damn. All right. Uh, see you next time when I will uh, test probably this thing. I didn't test anything from here. <laughs> I have. No, I mean, uh, some very basic stuff I, I tested. But the functionality, the actual the actual functionality with this module uh, that is commanding this beeping here, I have to test uh, that the next uh, the next uh, step. You know. The next step. Now I'm pressing it a little bit more, just to be sure. You know, pressing is good. Pressing is good. Remember, in life, everything in life, pressing and pushing is good. You know, pushing forward, pressing harder, squeezing the tits of luck <laughs> to be a little bit poetic. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, see you next time, and uh, that's it for this part. So, a little bit of problem, but this is uh, the test that I'm doing. Let me reset everything. <coughs> So this is the test I dragged the 5 volts from there to here, and the negative wire here, for this entire board. And uh, this module here is getting the 0 volts from there, and the 5 volts from there, which is going underneath to that wire. Okay? Okay, so th all this module is getting the 5 volts directly from there. And uh, these uh, LEDs that are lit right now are not connected, as you can see. Uh, I didn't connect them to anything. That's why... Uh, let's make an abstraction of it, of them, and put a piece of paper. So I put a piece of paper there. So uh, follow, if you can. So one is getting... So check this this first LED here. When it's zero, and zero, you see? It is commutating perfectly, zero. So this is functioning fine here. It's lighting up only when the zero is displaying. So it is decoding correctly this bit. But this here is uh, lighting up, uh, not randomly, but when it's seven. Only when it's seven, and then again when it's zero, uh, in the same time with that one. <coughs> and also the beep is on seven and on zero. You hear? So it's, it's two beeps right now. And it's good that I <coughs> it's good that I have that LED there that is telling me when the beep is happening. Uh, I have a visual indicator for the beeping. So that's, uh, you see? That's the test I did right now. I want to simplify it like this. I don't want to put all the diodes because the signal it is decoded correctly here. Uh, I I, uh, I also deconnected this line here in the impression that all, all these uh, connections that are not really connected to anything here will influence what I'm having here. I, I really don't stay and think about it. So it's easy. It was easy to just disconnect this line from uh, from the others, and it still uh, didn't resolve this seven uh, issue. So uh, it is a funky, funky, funky business here. Uh, remember, this is uh, inverse. So this is not receiving five volts through here. It is actually a surging. To, to correctly function, to, to actually little LED, LED is surging through to here. <laughs> and it's a little bit of scratching, head scratching, how to make it work. I hope I can make it work in the end. I'll have to, to dig deeper and find the problem. The problem is probably on this cardboard that I'm having here. And probably this is wrong. I hope, I really, really hope it's not wrong. <laughs> I really hope it's, it's not wrong. I'll have to measure something. Probably I'll have to, to find a way to, to correct this uh, seven mistake that is lighting up on seven for some reason. And uh, I did put this wire, this green wire is uh, in, uh, G uh, signal, is this yellow wire that is coming into uh, this signal uh, pad here, so the diode is pointing towards the uh, this board, but that diode is pointing <coughs> towards the chips um, uh, that way. So this uh, this diode here uh, in the original drawing was uh, six diodes, all uh, in parallel, and uh, one, uh, and the linked here on this line, uh, all the same, was uh, was on the same line pr pretty much, and each diode was going to uh, A, B, C, D, A, F, uh, instead of G, uh, uh, but not the G. Uh, G is only coming in, uh, as you can see, it is coming into the board, into the circuit. But I managed to simplify it right now, this logic that I'm having here, but some, it should have worked. I mean, it is working here on the top, it is working quite, it is not lifting up on seven, it's lifting up only on zero. But this motherfucker is lifting up on zero, uh, on seven as well, so that's a weird, very, very weird uh, problem. I'll have to, to dig up uh, to find a solution. That's it for this part. Uh, always expect problems, always, don't hope it will work from the beginning, uh, always expect problems, and uh, yeah, <laughs> see you later. All right, that's it for this part. All right, check this out. I know it's a little bit annoying. You must uh, support it for a little bit. Uh, well, this is the slowest. Let me reset it. So that's the slowest. And when it's catching zero, and a little bit of one, but it's fine. It, at least it's not beeping at, at seven. And if I'm moving 
The speed? If I'm increasing the speed? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Exactly what I wanted. Exactly, exactly what I wanted. Okay, uh, let me... Actually, I have a switch here. <laughs> That is connected directly to the beeper and is shutting it off if it's too annoying, especially, <laughs> especially now in the testing mode. So uh, I made a bunch of uh, changes, as you can see. I took out these two components. Uh, this is a passive uh, buzzer, and I replaced it with the active buzzer that is beeping as long as the zero is displayed, which is a little bit of a problem if the zero will stay too long. But uh, the difference from this to that is that it's beeping extremely loud and also do a tone <laughs> right now. <laughs> and then I changed this. Uh, you can see there is, is mentioned uh, PNP, and here is mentioned emitter base, and there probably you can see a C connector. You see uh, that little guy there? It, it means a collector. But this is an NPN, uh, so that's the PNP. This was the arrangement, how I, I placed it here on the board. And I took out, I actually had to, to search a little bit if I can find something as height, uh, the same model like that. Uh, and this is an NPN, and don't ask me about logic, <laughs> the logic of this sounding device, because it's working. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> My role here was to change components and until it's working. Uh, also, 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 I changed that resistor from the beginning there. The first one that I changed was that. Uh, it re remedied the... Um, the seven uh, error a little bit. Uh, it was still there, but uh, extremely diminished. Uh, what I did, I put, uh, I believe, five kilo there. Let me zoom in if I can read some shit from what is there. Uh, 47. Uh, so 4.7 kilo. And, and this uh, <coughs> and this next to it is uh, one kilo. So one kilo here and five kilo there. It was one kilo here. And uh, I increased it to 10 kilo. And then I decreased it to four kilo, uh, 4 kilo, 4.7, five kilo. And, <coughs> and it, it does the trick. It does, It is doing the trick. And uh, yeah, cool. Ah, uh, I have a slight error. Sometimes it's, be it's beeping loud. Sometimes it's beeping very low. I I'm not sure why and when. Probably it's a connection somewhere. Or it's just the logic of the circuit wheel until it's charging like, like a capacitor, something probably. I have no idea. But I, I observed if I was heating up this pad, it was very loud all the time. And as long as this uh, pad was cooling down, uh, it's changed to, to very low noise like it's doing right now. But being Duoton, yeah, it's good enough. It's working like shit a little bit, <laughs> but it is doing the, the function. It's, do, it's doing the, the beeping function. Yeah, very, very cool. I, I love it. I love it. This is exactly what I wanted. As strange and weird as it's working right now, sometimes it's uh, louder, sometimes it's uh, quieter, but it's still uh, here. I can still hear it. So <laughs> very, very cool. And I resolved the problem with only two diodes. As you can see here, let me go back to the diagram actually. Here. I have a ton of diodes here, in total seven diodes, six common and only one inverse. And, <coughs> and I escaped, uh, I made the trick, I actually thought on this uh, problem while, while I was uh, in bed, uh, semi-awake, when I was waking up from, from the sleep, and uh, exactly in that moment, in that period of time when I'm waking up, uh, my brain is extremely calm and can give me a extremely good answers to my problems. And I was thinking on this arrangement, maybe I can uh, actually cross my mind to, to simplify it. And uh, what I did here, pretty much, I took, uh, I made a, a diagram. Yeah. I made a diagram here. And I will explain it very, very quick. I hope it will be quick. So this is the LCD, okay? And these are the notations for the for the each segment. And each segment is on these outputs from this uh, 4110 that uh, we have here. And they correspond exactly with the uh, with the segments. So it's, it's, it's each pin is going exactly to each uh, segment, okay? So, uh, and I also have some notations, A, G, F, yeah, you see, A, G, F, uh, B, C, D, E. So I know exactly where to drag the wire from, but it's a trick. I mean, uh, you have to pay attention. I have to pay attention to, uh, I changed this uh, uh, to from <coughs> from F because F it was too close to G and I didn't like it. <coughs> so I drag it from this other side, but doesn't matter from where you drag it. The idea is uh, to be exactly uh, for zero. So imagine when, when it's zero, G is not lit. Okay, but A, B, C, D, A, F is lit. This is rep this is representing uh, uh, digit zero. When it's one, when B and C is lit, and everything else is uh, not lit, meaning that is zero. So B and C are one one. Okay, so for zero, G is uh, is zero. Uh, you see here, G is zero. Come on, G is zero. And what is that? D. This D is one. When is zero? When is uh, a character one? B and C is uh, one, but the rest is zero. Like I said. So let's pass through all the digits and see when we reach. If we reach this uh, truth table that I have here for zero. If other numbers are coinc coinciding with these two guys. So for one, G is zero, D is zero. So it's not coinciding, everything will not work. For two, is uh, G is one and D is one, but it's not D one, G zero, okay? So it must be this zero and this one. So for two is one, one. For three is one, one. For four, uh, one, 
zero. So it's inverse. G is one and B and D is zero. So it's not good. Uh, for five, uh, one, one. Uh, for six, uh, one, one. For seven, zero, zero. For eight, uh, one, one. Uh, for nine is one, zero. Again, inverse. G is one, but D is zero. And only for zero, this is zero and this is one. Okay, so that's the logic. That's the the playing that I. That's the logic that I was playing with in my head while I was uh, uh, semi sleep uh, when I was waking up, and then I actually put it in practice here. I, I connected it and I escaped with only two logic diodes instead of seven per each. Uh, you know, and this is a shortcut. Uh, I, let's say I invented it, but uh, for sure I, I uh, my brain. Uh, <coughs> it is my invention, of course, but uh, this kind of shortcuts are everywhere. Most probably, most probably are, are everywhere. You know, any logic devices that are using diode logic. Uh, if they still exist even today, so that's uh, uh, this. Uh, and I draw the the, the diode uh, how they are going. So G is pointing towards here. Uh, for, so this is G that is pointing. This is the diode. You see the line there, and it's pointing towards this circuit here. And uh, <coughs> and D, <coughs> the diode should point towards the LCD circuit to, towards this uh, area. So this is the diode that is pointing towards that, and it's connected to D. Uh, so th this is it in, in a very short, <coughs> a very short explanation of what I did there. That logic with the, the, only those two diodes and those two wires, and it's perfectly fine. It's working perfectly fine, and. Uh, and I, so, so let me uh, put it this way. If everything was connected, and no, uh, if, so another reasoning why I'm trusting this is correct and is working and it is not, uh, is not uh, impeding or obstructing the logic. Uh, if uh, if this sequence, logic sequence was in on other number than zero, this LED was leading, not this, this one. And if this was leading two times, it was telling me the logic wasn't good. So I could, uh, I should have put more diodes to, to restrict completely only on zero. So that's why I'm, I'm very, very sure this logic is absolutely fine. What is here? The problem is here with the um, with the sound circuit, which I I whistle literally. I whistle around it until it worked, and uh, it is working right now. It's fine. Uh, all that I have left to do is to mount two diodes and two wires. Actually, to uh, first of all to to glue this board here uh, to that, and then mount two diodes. And I will not mount it mount them vertically there probably because it's very weird and I don't like it. But Probably I will put them here because I have some space and I really have some space there as well. I will leave it spe specifically for diodes and I will use SMD diodes, not this uh, big uh, through hole ones. And I will wire beneath, uh, beneath the board probably, or or on the surface here to be uh, to to show where they are going. Yeah, probably probably on, on the on outside here. And this is it. It is working, with the exception of this motherfucker that is sometimes is working loudly, sometimes it's not working loudly. And I have no idea yet what <laughs> is its problem. Motherfucker, louder! <laughs> Come on. Let me reset everything. No. Yeah, well. uh, uh, it is charging something, and after a time, after some time, it is uh, beeping louder, I think. <coughs> or, yeah, kind of. Uh, I'm just putting my, my finger touching everything. <laughs> Maybe it will influence the fucker. No, it's not. Uh, but, yeah. This is reminding me of a. Uh, Hospital beeping, you know, those uh, devices on in hospitals that are beeping like this uh, for cardio or something. <laughs> yeah. But in my case, it means that it's running at a certain speed there. Yeah, uh, fabulous, excellent. Uh, I'm very pleased so far. As as weird as it's running, this one. <laughs> come on, come on, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably some wire somewhere, some weird connections. I've also removed. Uh -huh. Huh? I've also removed this uh, resistor, like you see there. Come on, maybe I can find you. Uh, no chance. Uh, uh. No, it's very random when it's louder, when it's quieter. I actually prefer it when it's quieter, <laughs> but I want to know exactly the reason why when it's quiet and when it's loud. So uh, I removed the other resistors from the other uh, points, and uh, I have to mount them there. All right, let's hit it for a very fast speed. I love it. I love it. Here on camera is not is showing like one is lifting up. And one not, but in reality they are flickering at the same, exactly the same uh, frequency at the same time. Uh, so probably it's the camera refreshing rate, showing this is not. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> very, very, very cool. And this is actually, this is the uh, the highest frequency uh, speed. What I have it's on maximum here, and I love the fact that I can hear the. You see, you hear? Very, very cool. Very cool. And also here the refresh rate of the camera is showing like, uh... yeah, but in reality I can see them uh, flashing. Uh, very fast, right? Yeah, very cool, very very cool. All right, thank you very much. I, I hope you like it, and uh, see you next time when I will uh, finalize and, and and glue this module here in continuation. All right, to the next time. Bye. -bye. All right. Uh, so I remade this my virtual uh, circuit 
remake it uh, with the new data that I have in reality. Of course, the buzzer is not buzzing here in the simulator. I don't know how to make it buzz. Probably there is a way, but I don't know it yet. Uh, but I'm looking on this LED uh, that is the signaling when it should beep this buzzer. I could theoretically insert in line uh, with the, this buzzer uh, an LED, but... Um, hmm. Yeah, I put this guy here, but it's not really giving me anything. Anyway, uh, the thing is uh, that I changed this transistor. It was a PMP here, and I changed it to an NPN like I'm having it right now. I've also changed this resistor that I changed it a long time ago, actually, a couple of days ago. And I made a mark here, a, a note. This 10 kilo and this 16 kilo uh, using in the real circuit like this, and it's working absolutely perfectly there. <coughs> and it seems it is working here in the simulator as well, which was absolutely insane. Uh, I mean, it's giving me the exact uh, uh, behavior like in reality. You will see it in a second. I've also modified these lines exactly like I'm having it, uh, them in reality. I, I, I uh, erased all the other uh, lines, uh, like you are seeing here, you see, uh, on the, here on the left. Uh, so I disconnected uh, that and left exactly what I'm having right now connected uh, as. I've also changed this 4.7 kilo that I'm having it here. Uh, it was before it was a 10 kilo, you see. And uh, so it was 10 kilo. So I changed it, it to 4.7. And also, I changed, at least here in the simulator, I had to go to, sorry, uh, to this LED, specifically to, uh, to this LED, because it was not working. Uh, initially, it was set to digital, and then I changed it to analog, and then I, I lowered its uh, cur current uh, drive. Its current drive, uh, and I lowered it to 100 milliamps, and then I changed it to this value, 280, <laughs> almost 300 microamps. So, and now... I, I have pretty much the same behavior, exactly the same behavior, behavior like in reality, and I was extremely impressed, extremely impressed. So check this out, check this out. I will clock everything manually from this button here uh, on the bottom, and check this out. This uh, LED is not fully lit, but it is a little bit lit, lit up. Uh, and it is, it will run in the same time with this one that is on top. Uh, the sequence will be in, uh, in parallel. So when I will click now, you see, this is fully closed, but this is still remaining a little bit on, exactly as in reality. I, 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 I've seen this little... Very slight detail, uh, the, the buzzer, especially auditively, the buzzer, that duotone that is making the buzzer <coughs> from higher pitch to lower pitch or something. And when I'm pressing again, now it's fully closed, absolutely closed. Amazing. And now, like that. Uh, so now uh, let, let's count here. You see, this is number two. Uh, when I'm pressing three, four, five, six, and nothing lit up here. Let's check with this number as well. So this is six, you see? This is number six. And on seven, remember I had a problem on seven, and I still probably have, <coughs> have it uh, right now, but for some reason, uh, I cannot... Uh, <coughs> I don't know how to tweak the transistor values here in Proteos to give me a better response like in reality. It's having a ton of junk uh, options inside and, and it's just, nah, I don't know how to, to use it, to tweak it, this transistor. But uh, right now, so, so on 7, I was having that error. You remember, when I'm clicking now, you see it's lifting up a little tiny bit uh, on, on 7. And let's check, the, let's check the, the display here. This is 7. This is number 7. And exactly on, on this number or digit, it was the same behavior in reality as well. And when I'm uh, counting next to 8 now, it, it is turning off, uh, uh, so now it's 8, let's check, everything should be lit up, and it is, this is number 8 here, and this is 9, and when I will press next, it will become 0, and also lit up these two guys in the same time, bang. But also, uh, remember, this this was not fully lit up uh, in reality as well. Uh, I, I did uh, I did observe this tiny little bit detail myself, but I probably didn't mention it in, in the movie. Uh, you know, But it's good enough, because here in Proteo Simulator, I can see and simulate the exact... Uh, absolutely the exact same behavior like I'm getting it from reality. Uh, it is a miracle that I'm getting this result here in, uh, in the simulator. I swear to God, uh, this is very, very cool that I can get this kind of simulation here in the uh, in Proteos. It's very cool. I'm very impressed. So, uh, working in parallel with what I'm having in reality, that's the uh, impressive part. That's absolutely amazing. At least, you know, from my level of knowledge and the, the way I, I know how to, to work with software, this is quite uh, quite an achievement what, I, what I'm having here. I, I only wanted to show you this uh, little miracle uh, of simulation that I'm having. And this is it for this part. I will. Uh, I, I, I wanted, all that I wanted here to do was to correct uh, the circuit diagram with the correct values, and then it uh, it crossed my mind uh, to tweak the LED to see what's happening. And when I observed that it's lifting up on 1 and on 7, like, exactly like it is in reality, wow, that is too cool. And I said, hey, I have to make a movie about it because it's, yeah, it's too, way, way out, <laughs> way out there. <laughs> no, it's, it's very, very cool. I'm very happy. I'm very pleased. Uh, of course, this circuit definitely needs some uh, some retouching. I'm not good at, at I, I am absolutely uh, not good at uh, audio stuff. Uh, audio circuitry in general, I'm just zero. <laughs> I'm zero. And I'm not feeling uh, any attraction towards it, towards learning it. I mean, as a general rule, I know some general rules how to make uh, something to buzz. But I'm, I'm kind of thinking them from uh, automatic. For me, everything is automatic in electronics. This is how I'm thinking electronics, as an automatic uh, way to, to make anything to automate anything, pretty much. And creating uh, sounds, it's still an automatic way of thinking. At least is how I'm perceive, perceiving it and how I, am, how I am thinking about it. But there are definitely, there are other better ways than my logic and my way of thinking. And uh, I cannot compete and I don't want to compete <laughs> to them <laughs> because it's not my way. My way is automatic way. Uh, and that's how I'm thinking everything in, uh, in uh, electronics. My electronics is an automatics 
uh, automatization electronics what i'm my mind what my mind is thinking all the time that what i am screwed in what i'm um calibrated onto so I, my calibration in electronics is on automatization pretty much and i'm thinking from this point of view everything <laughs> even stuff that i shouldn't like like i would stuff uh, for some reason <laughs> by changing one transistor with another type it's completely wrong and i know it but i did it anyway because it worked <laughs> and when it's working sayonara. <laughs> sayonara. i don't ask uh, i don't ask why <laughs> too much if it's working it's good enough all right i'm very very happy that i finished this very complicated uh, piece of uh circuitry all that remains now to do in reality of course and probably here in the uh, in the simulator as well i have to, to modify everything uh, the rest these three guys that are left uh, i have to modify them and also in reality to, to modify them and test again everything if it's actually uh it shouldn't actually because i have a jumper if it's not influenced by this other tree so I, I want to see all this 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 entire module i want to see him working and when i'm seeing it working correspondently uh correctly uh, correctly and without any kind of uh, errors excepting the ones that I ha i'm having already which are absolutely fine uh, i'm good with them it's fine it's okay uh, but uh, if uh, i hope there is no influence from from this the rest of the circuit that I'm having. That's my major, uh, you know, uh, thought at the moment. And if I'm not having any kind of interference from the rest and everything is working as it should be, poof, project fucking finished. Uh, well, uh, I, I still have to add uh, this, uh, not implemented yet, a uh, fixed one second clock options. Uh, no, actually, let me uh, show you. Yeah, this is the component, uh, component that I'm expecting to arrive. Uh, they are specifically this number, 32,768 hertz. Uh, the rest of the naming are the, just uh, erroneous uh, naming. Uh, probably people are writing these erroneous uh, numbers or values, but the real um, value is this 32,768 hertz uh, or bits, bitings per second. And uh, uh, I'm expecting this is a, this is a special uh, quartz oscillator. And I'm expecting 20 pieces, as you can see, for this sum of money plus this uh, shipping uh, sum of money. So it's uh, less than two dollars, a little bit less than two dollars. Uh, so 84, 84, yeah, 184. And uh, and this is a special uh, oscillator because it is uh, LTC. They should have uh, put uh, that uh, naming uh, that uh, RTC uh, in the naming here because that's that's important. RTC it means real time clock, and it is a a type of oscillator that is uh, clocking binarily. So if you are uh, dividing this number by two, you will get to number one. So let me uh, show you, demonstrate this extremely quickly and show you exactly what uh, what it means. So uh, let me copy it from here. Where is the calculator? Uh, and divide by two equal 1600, 8000, 4000, 2000, 1000, 512, 128, 64. You, you probably you start to recognize these numbers 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. That's it. And this is a perfectly uh, made binary. Uh, don't tell them This is a perfect binary um, number. And uh, it is a special, very, very special and very precise. Uh, oscillator <laughs> to count binarily, and then and then I need from this frequency, uh, this frequency actually uh, this number is two to the power of uh, 15, I believe. Uh, let me check. So uh, so log base two. I already have it there mentioned, 32 something, and uh, yeah, it's two to the power of 15. So if I'm if I'm calculating here uh, two to the power of 15, I will get the same number. You see, 32,768. You see. It's absolutely the same number, and uh, that's how I vice versa checking <laughs> something. Yeah, you know? I recently learned about this log logarithmic uh, mathematical function uh, in base. It is it is having some bases, base ten, base three, whatever bases you have to. Uh, but what I'm having here binary is base two. So that that's uh, quite simple. I have no idea how to make it on the calculator. I really I did follow some tutorials and they were so complicated to do it uh, on on this on this normal calculator that I'm having it here. Uh, actually, you probably have to get on the scientific calculator. Uh, you see here uh, instead of uh, instead of standard and do some very weird. Although it's having that log here, but it's not working at all because you have to add this log. Make this base, uh, which this calculator is not having it, absolutely not having it, and you have to to dig uh, behind your ears, you know. Uh, yeah, it's shit. <laughs> Let me put it back, and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, this is it. About, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is all about this uh, oscillator that I, I commanded. It's still on the way. I didn't receive it yet. Is is coming? Uh, is in plan to make something very, 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 very exact. With this oscillator, I will make a, a very exact one second beating. This uh, oscillator, by the way, it is used in all the clocks in the world. Uh, is exactly this uh, frequency that we have here. Uh, this this kind of oscillator, well, crystal oscillator, uh, and. Uh, and next, I have to this. That's why I showed you this uh, two to the power of 15 here, uh, because um, I have this this chip, which can count to the to, to two to the power of 24, I believe. So this is the the chip that I uh, that I commanded 4536. Unfortunately, it's not mentioned here in the picture. <laughs> they only have two chips there. Okay, this is it. All right. So this is a programmable timer. Um, well, I I hope it will do the trick that I needed. So pretty much, yeah, we I can. Uh, so you see here is specified here to the, the device can count from 1 to 2 to the power of 24 so it is programmable pretty much it's very very interesting because it's having so many um, probably flip flops inside because you, you are doing it uh, this uh, dividing this div dividing you are doing it with flop flip flops so pretty much it is having 24 of, uh, flip flops but also it's having a method of uh, setting you know binary select you, you select it in binary which uh, power 2 to the power you want to start with or end with I, I didn't I never worked with this chip but from what I read so far you have to select or bypass uh, binarily 
and then it will number to the to the end and then reset back to the, the set that you, you, you put there and very very interesting anyway uh this i have already two circuits prepared uh but they are using something uh, too yeah it's uh, i don't have these chips or i have something from i don't have those and also i don't have these chips either but i i plan to make with one chip the entire dividing and using only one uh oscillator like i'm having here probably or like i'm having here i'm not sure how <laughs> yeah they are not the same but uh, i will uh yeah probably they are the same they have two capacitor and uh, one resistor there one resistor there and one here there yeah they, it, they are quite uh, quite uh, the same so this is the oscillator phase and i believe i can make it oscillate with this kind of circuitry when it will arrive uh, <laughs> that's my plan and with only one chip that is counting instead of two chips like you are saying here that, that is counting to two to the power of 15 that's the entire thing that i plan and i hope it will work but we will see when uh, everything will come and i do plan if i will finish this before my components will arrive uh, from uh, from ale uh, i will do most probably a very another another uh, oscillator like this with the schmidt trigger uh, uh, 7440 but i will set it up the resistor and the capacitor i will i will tweak them by eye and by looking on my on some clock that is displaying seconds and i will tweak it as close as possible to that uh seconds to that value of seconds that clock is showing and <laughs> and uh, uh that's it i mean i don't really want something perfectly exact and absolutely you know to the microseconds to the picoseconds i don't really need that but to be close enough you know if it's having a little bit of uh, error you know if it if uh, it will jump to instead of 100 seconds it will jump to 101 it will count to 101 or 99 seconds it's really not a big deal and i will tweak it until i will get a very very close um, a very good resolution of the timer from what i understand doing it with a resistor and a capacitor like this uh, they are very uh, susceptible to temperature changes so when i will calibrate it uh, the temperature if it will increase or decrease it will change also the, <laughs> the the second mechanism it will not be a second one exactly one second anymore but i believe i can live with it i believe i can live with it it will be very close to one second that's the idea you know <clears throat> to be very 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 close uh, comparative with what i'm having right now so this is it for this uh, chapter i hope you like it and see you later all right i hope it's not too annoying <laughs> uh make abstraction i will actually put a little bit of no uh. so uh, you'll get used to it uh, what i did here i put a let me actually make it number like this very quickly so what i did here i dragged two wires one from the base of the transistor and this black wire is on the base and this red wire is from that signal point and i put a resistor a potentiometer here and i tweak it and let me actually show you very rarely here you can hear one one and one seven you hear so one, one seven is a little tiny bit of signal still there but it's it's fine it's fine i mean the strongest uh, beep is one zero, which is perfect. With this guy here, if if I'm rotating it to the maximum or minimum here, it's barely hearing. And if I'm rotating it, yep. So it is having a lot of error, uh, some margins of errors. From those margins, the errors are starting to, to misbehave. But it is having a point where it's working absolutely fine. Yeah. See? It's like a... And also, you see the LEDs. Yeah. So I'm talking from this uh, potentiometer. <coughs> so the internal... Uh, the LEDs are synchronous with, with the beeping. The beeping is a bit uh, sensitive. Uh, it's catching... It's, it's a duotone, duotone uh, beeping. But it's fine. It's okay. So let me... Yeah, you see? Let me stop it. Uh, I cannot catch it. Yeah, one one. There you hear? One seven. Exactly one seven is beeping. You see, zero one and seven, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, the potentiometer uh, solved. Uh, the potentiometer solved the problem of uh, randomly going lower, lower intensity of the beeper, or randomly getting back to higher volume of the beeper so i was having that little uh, problem with the sensitivity sometimes were, was working lower volume sometimes were was working at normal volume uh, the volume of the beeper so right now it's very loud <laughs> because of this potentiometer tweaking it so that uh, i actually okay so i actually talked with my friend a romanian friend uh his name is mr kiro and uh, mr kiro uh, he is an audio uh, electronist engineer it's an old friend and uh, he likes uh, another aspect another uh, line <coughs> another line of electronics he is with uh, audio with ampli amplifications uh, stuff like that uh, but i am with uh, automatization in general uh, we are very very different uh, paths uh, me and him uh, but we remained friends for many years and he actually suggested me a couple of uh, arrangements tests 
uh, to do. And one of, uh, let me close it, or, or, or making it super fast like that. <laughs> it's chirping right now like a little bird. <laughs> like, all right, yeah, it's a bit uh, probably too annoying, uh, but let me get it lower. Okay, so uh, so he uh, told me to check uh, more stuff from here to check those resistors, and I, I told also that, that LED that is also surging a little bit of current uh, through it and probably affecting the, the correct uh, functioning of the transistor. And I said to him, I already did that, and it didn't uh, influence the, the, the thing. And he smartly suggested to me to, to try a potentiometer. And after I tried it, <laughs> I believe I, I reached a peak of perfect functioning, not going into random states like it was before. So this is a kind of a problem solved. Now I wished, now I wish to insert uh, not this particular uh, potentiometer, but one potentiometer uh, between the base and that point. But I don't have that much space. So all that remained for me to do at this point is to measure what value I'm having there the best, uh, you know, when, when I'm playing with the potentiometer and I find the best peak or the best uh, angle of the potentiometer and then measure, uh, check uh, the value that is there. Of course, disconnecting, disconnecting it from these two points because I inserted this uh, 16 kilo originally and when I measure it in circuit, it gave me 7 kilo. And uh, uh, the circuit is definitely doing uh, some uh, business there. It's affecting the, the reading of the of the resistor. So I have to, to take out these wires from the potentiometer, read the value, the, the exact value, and then put it there as a single resistor and uh, problem solved, theoretically. We will see. <coughs> this was a... <coughs> this was a very minor... A problem, uh, and uh, I'm very happy it's an audio <laughs> driver problem. Uh, I, I still have some other problems with one and seven, but those are, uh, you know, let's not mention them. <laughs> All right, let me turn on. All right, excellent. It's beeping exactly like a hospital, uh, <laughs> like a hospital bed uh, monitor, you know. <laughs> yeah, you see how uh, everything is changing a little bit. All right, see you later. That's it for this uh, part, and uh, see you later. Bye bye. All right, actually, I forgot uh, that I have a, a length of travel that everything is stopping here, and I can pause it like that, and I can let it run first, if I'm not catching those numbers. <laughs> so yeah, uh, what I did, uh, this is a small, very, very small update. I measured, I, I tweaked the value here until it was somewhere in the middle. So if from here up, I was getting errors, and from here down, I was getting also errors. Uh, in this interval between these two points, I was getting good results. Good results meaning the beeper was beeping correctly, and also the LEDs were lighting correctly, especially this one, because at, uh, at some errors, uh, the, the beeper was beeping, but the LED was not lighting anymore because it was allowing too much current, probably, and it was eating the current from the LED. So between this point and this point, it was working okay. So somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle here, I kind of, by the ear, you know, by the ear and by the, by the eye, I, I choose a spot on the potentiometer there, and then I took out the wires, I measured it, and it turned out to be 12.5 kilo, and I put a 12 kilo here, <coughs> and it is working fine. It is working fine, as it should be. Now I'm, now I'm extra happy. Now, now it's making like a little bird. <laughs> okay, so let me, yeah, like that. I, I stop it from the potentiometer there. So quite okay, quite okay. I'm very pleased so far. What an adventure with a <laughs> with the audio amplifier here, or audio driver. Audio module that I'm having here. All right, uh, this is it. Thank you, Mr. Kiro. You will you will be remembered forever, <laughs> from now to infinite. You will be remembered as the guy, the Romanian who helped me in this very important for the humanity project that I'm having here. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and see you later with other cool updates. Uh, let me actually zoom in on that resistor here. You see, it's written on it. Twelve kilo. You see, twelve kilo. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, so. <laughs> I have a problem. I, so first of all, I managed to to glue this cardboard with the rest of the cardboards. Uh, I can show it very quickly. There it is. I was looking on the other side. I put also this cardboard here uh, to protect the wires that were flapping around there. And um, okay, I also dragged this insanely long wire from there, from five volts. So from here, you see this white, grayish wire down here, and uh, underneath they are linked together. And also <coughs> a negative wire, uh, which is this and it's coming to the tab, and all the pads are, <coughs> are linked together. All right, so uh, I also put these two diodes and I link them to their corresponding pins here and also here. Uh, not to these two, these two are next, but uh, for now, I encounter a very big problem, an unexpected problem, and I have to resolve it somehow. So for this uh, first module, when I move the jumper here, it's working absolutely fine as in the tests I made so far, but when I'm doing this, when I'm taking it out, it's beeping all the time. I'm not sure it should have. And when I'm putting the jumper here, so seven, eight, nine, one, but not on zero. So something is weird, very, very weird. I checked the diodes, they are correctly mounted. I have no idea what it can be. It's a very, very strange error. So it's beeping all the time, pretty much, when I'm moving it to the second one. Very, very bad. All right, I right, let's hope I, I can resolve it. I'm sorry if this is annoying, the sound, but uh, this is how I'm, this is the building, this is the stage of this part where is the, is the sound, and it is working perfectly. Uh, Pay attention when is zero now and one of course uh, it, it is catching a little bit of one and it's uh, <laughs> duotone.
didn't. I'm not sure how to correct that one that is catching. Uh, <coughs> I don't know why he's catching that one. <laughs> Uh, but the thing is that I switch it to this part side and it's working absolutely perfectly. You see, it's leading exactly one zero now. You see, and uh, this and this. You see, together. Unfortunately, this guy is beeping uh, <laughs> all the time, and it's not uh, that good. Well, I didn't think through all the details, possible details, and uh, some uh, things uh, are left uh, like that. But in, in a sense, it's good. It will show a progression of everything. So what I did so far. Uh, to to make it work, uh, I linked this very long ass wire. You see it from there. So from here, from five volts, is under this red wire and is going back to this pad. And from th uh, here, our pads are linked uh, underneath the board, the cardboard. And from here, from this pad, I drag this red wire to here, where is the power for this module. <coughs> and also a negative wire, which is this guy here, and is going to this pad. And all these pads uh, are uh, linked together underneath. And I drag another wire here to this module. So it, the idea is that this entire module that I'm having here is powered with from this wire from 5 volts, directly from, from 5 volts. What I'm having here, including this part, uh, are powered with 3 volts. And here is 5 volts. It's a bit messy, but uh, it's working. 5 volts uh, is because of this uh, beeper that I'm having. And it's working perfectly as it is. And I, I thought for a moment, for a while, I was having an error. But uh, what I was actually having, I was having this wire disconnected. I don't know why I disconnected it or I leave it disconnected. Yeah, uh, so I linked these diodes, you see, uh, they are stand, standing vertically. Uh, this to that pad, to, to that pin, to D pin. I actually have a little bit of sketch here. I believe I showed it already. So here, and I'm I, I'm actually guiding uh, with this little sketch that I'm having. It it helped me. And yeah, pretty, I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. So next, so if I'm moving the jumper from here, probably it will beeping continuously if I, when I move. Yeah, it is beeping continuously. <laughs> And these two are synchronous when that zero is forming there. And uh, it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. Uh, I will move it further here. Excellent, excellent, I love it, I love it. And next I have to add the diodes for this module here, another diodes for this module, and it's finished. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, thank you very much, I hope you like it, and see you next time. And finally, it is finished. <laughs> Unbelievable, but it's finished. I mounted all the diodes there. I put the jumper on the last one that I tested, actually, and it's working perfectly. Also this one as well. So eight, nine. Zero. This and this. This two. And on one I have that uh, strange error, but on two is, uh, is that uh, duoton. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> this is, by the way, the maximum speed of this counter, of this uh, <coughs> frequency generator that I'm having here. The maximum that is, uh, it can do. Nine. Zero. Fuck. It up. Open with that one. And on one is duoton. And that's it. I hope I can get rid of that uh, one problem. Most probably I will have to insert a third diode somewhere. I have no idea where, but it's my best guess. The logic. Okay, let's jump to this side. And now the, the beeping is more frequent because it's very speedy. So this two, one zero, nine zero. You see? Uh, I, now I can lower it a little bit. Uh, seven, eight, nine. You see? One zero. Those two. And one is stepping to one is the other tone. And okay. And when when I'm switching, when I, when it's not seeing any jumper, is beeping in continuously, which is a little bit annoying. But well, come on, come on, come on. I'm usually doing it with two hands. So if it's not having any jumper, it's beeping like an idiot. Okay. So it's on this. When this is zero. All right. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. And of course, on the first one, that you, you've already seen it. Beep, 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 beep. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I see. <laughs> one zero, that one. And eight, probably. <coughs> speeding, speeding it up. Uh, nine, should be. Never whooped. Nine. And now here, zero, zero, five, back. And when that is zero, zero, you see, when it's zero. Excellent, excellent. I really, really love it. I really love it. The, I love the functionality that I can get the functionality of it. Uh, of course, it's beeping very loud. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's it for the chirping. <laughs> uh, sorry about the sound, but this is uh, the project with uh, this beeper activated. And of course, if I switch that, it's functioning as well. Uh, to this point, at this very point that I am right now, Oh, the entire project that I made in simulator is here in reality, at this very point in reality. Uh, but I have uh, another uh, thing I want to add, another, like I, I repeatedly said until now, but now is the part when I will have to actually add that one precise one second uh, option. And probably I will have to integrate, let me switch, turn it off. Uh, and uh, probably I will have to add another uh, switch somewhere there uh, to actually switch between the variable speed, which is this potentiometer here, and the precise speed of one second, pretty much. And actually uh, leave room for the the other circuits, uh, the other components that uh, are coming right now in the postage, I already mentioned it. Them, uh, precise uh, quartz os oscillator, uh, LTC, real time clock, uh, binary, that uh, 
to, to, to the 24 gates, uh, flip-flop gates in one package, programmable uh, <laughs> logic circuit, integrated circuit, which is very, very interesting. The pro programmable part, I really love it. Uh, and I can't, ex I can't wait to actually put my hand on it and actually see how it's working. It's, it's, I'm very curious about it. But uh, that's it, that part. And I will uh, probably have to add another little but extremely important function that I didn't plan it in the beginning uh, is the output of this uh, entire thing. Uh, the output will be this autoclock wire, I believe. Yeah, uh, so pretty much I will have to make another pad there and drag a wire from there to there. Uh, and I want to, to drag to be able to connect this port, uh, this pad is like a port, uh, uh, output port, to connect it to other circuits that I'm having. And here I can see exactly how many bits uh, per second or per whatever variable uh, variation I, I make there. And it will beat this, this will uh, be a clock, an entire clock uh, thingy uh, with LCD display, with beeper, uh, with uh, many functions there. It will be interesting, you know, it's, it's an interesting device to to have it on your table and to, to play with, uh, <laughs> to actually use it in your other circuits uh, that and, uh, actually count uh, stuff. And also an input, uh, <coughs> uh, external impulse. You see there, that pad is already made, is already planned from the very beginning. And that external impulse uh, is um, is when a sensor or another, uh, like this 555 counter that I'm having here, uh, clock. So uh, an external clock, I, I will, I'll add it. And this will take over everything and it will increment and it will beep everything. I, I should make a test to be sure <laughs> because I don't remember if, 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 from what I remember, I know it, it was working, but with the new thing that I'm having here, I don't remember exactly what I did. Uh, so these three things I have left to add, to actually call it completed. And I will think if I will, if I want to add more, but probably this is all uh, already overflowed. What I'm having here is already full, way too full of stuff. <laughs> my, I presented it to my father who have absolutely no idea about electronics. He doesn't understand shit, but when he's uh, looking and, and uh, when I explained to him what he's doing everything, uh, he was very, very impressed. He was uh, amazed. He was wow, full of wow. But of course I had to explain him uh, a lot of details, what everything is doing and what I am doing, what I'm working at to, to, to to get to to get to what is my goal, you know, what is the meaning of all this? But he he was still didn't he was still doesn't uh, <coughs> understand what is this shit is good for. I don't understand what this shit is good for. <laughs> but uh, this was more like a challenge for me to drive uh, uh, static LCD display. This is the first time in my life when I'm actually driving driving an LCD display. Uh, static or multiplex, whatever it is. But it, it's the first time when I'm driving such a thing, and it's very challenging. It was very challenging, and, it, and I made it using parallel uh, parallel inputs. Uh, so it's very, very user friendly, but instead it was extremely hard to build it. But it's very, very user friendly and very easy to debug, uh, probably, if something will go wrong. I hope not. <laughs> I hope that nothing will go wrong. But who knows, you know? Let me fuck it up a little bit. This wire shouldn't be here. And everything will go to shit right now. Hope not. No, like that. Yeah, that's how I'm, get, I'm used to, to this wire to be there. All right, that's it. Uh, <laughs> the project finished. So let me show you these diodes here. Uh, this, this uh, were the, the last ones. Uh, look at this connection here. Is I'm not sure how good you can see. This is a little little detail here. Uh, let me add a piece of paper, actually. You see? you see how it is? In the middle there are two wires. You see the, the leg of the diode? And in the middle I, I soldered it. And I put a little bit of plastic there. <laughs> and that's the only funky wire. The rest of the wires are fine. And uh, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. It, it, does, it is having a considerable height. You know, it's way lifted up, so it's not touching shit. So yes, uh, at this point, this project, like I said already, is finished from the simulator perspective. The simulation that I did well, is on my table right now. And is working absolutely flawlessly. And I'm very happy about it. Okay, this is it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like uh, what I'm uh, having here. Let me turn on the beeping. Uh, I hope you like the, all this uh, trouble that I get into. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you later. Bye-bye. From our favorite artist electronics, Mr. Q12 here. Remember that. <laughs> right, and I made here a list. <sighs> what I need to add. These are very simple things to add, in my opinion. But uh, in reality, it proved me wrong uh, for, for very simple things, uh, numerous times. Uh, but they should be very simple to, to, to make. Uh, a fine-tuned pot potentiometer. Uh, so this is a coarse potentiometer what I'm having. It's going from 0 to 100. But one fi uh, finer potentiometer that is dependent on the value of this guy. And uh, when you, if, especially uh, when I'm reaching that uh, slower <coughs> uh, timing. And when it's very, very slow from this coarse, very rough, uh, potentiometer then with the fine tune to, to fine tune it to to one sec one second only from from, from the fine tune and that's a that's a, an old idea actually it's not a new one uh this is a new idea output pad uh so mm, i will have to make a, a metallic pad like this probably somewhere there and drag a wire to it uh and, and also leave room for text to to write there what the role is that pad an output pad that is going outside uh, is uh, <coughs> <coughs> It's transmitting the, the impulse that is generating here uh, in, in the device to the outside world to some chip. And an input pad, uh, which is this guy here, I mentioned it already a couple of times, uh, from external impulse. So uh, if I want to read something, I will solder it here and read on the display whatever is counting. Uh, if it's a wheel, if it's a button, if it's a clock uh, from somewhere, uh, this will um, show 
at least uh, if not the frequency, at least how fast it's moving. So that's uh, interesting, you know, yeah. the, especially because I don't have a frequency meter. Uh, I have one, but it's not a good one. Uh, this is an alternative. <laughs> uh, one second oscillator, which I beat this uh, iron a lot of times, and probably I will make it from, from one gate from here, and probably I will have to elongate. I hope not. I hope I, I will have to maintain the same uh, the dimension of this cardboard that I'm having here, adding the other stuff. But if it's not possible, I will have probably to add a little bit more space, a little bit more cardboard, and it will be more longer, <laughs> which is not yet good. And, over, uh, and the final uh, challenge, this is actually a hard one, covert and labels. I have, this is a, an entire subject to discuss with, but uh, the idea is that I never pay attention, absolutely, I never pay attention to covert and labels, the final uh, look, the final look of the device. I only was con concentrated on the func functionality of the device, which is in itself what is mostly required. I mean, this is the most important thing to be concentrated on the functionality, of course. But uh, I am an artist, you know, I'm a digital artist, I'm a painter, um, or at least I was. <laughs> and uh, I do care about the aesthetics, how things look and feel. And uh, this is pure technical. This is purely technical <coughs> uh, ensemble and design and feel and look, purely technical, but not artistically. Artistically is I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's in between. It's not good, not bad. Yeah, it probably is more bad than good. I should design everything in mind, all this stuff, from the very beginning with, with a cover or, or at least a, a user interface. And I have this idea for a very long time actually, and I never got to stick with it. I mean, uh, what I'm having this way of designing flat with uh, all the buttons and the jumpers and, and the functions that I have to change and potentiometers in Chilquit, pretty much, is on board all. And this design is. Is okay, is okay, but the problem is labeling <laughs> and covering. So cover and labels are the final layer of everything when I have to cover everything and to be resistant when I'm pressing on it. That's the problem. It is not only covering, but also it has to be resistant to my pressing, to my fingering, when I'm pressing with my fingers and, and squish it hard. That's the problem. And of course, I'll make a box for at least for the back of it and the sides, all the sides, all the four sides. But on the front, it'll be uh, open. And uh, uh, it's quite, uh, if I will give this to someone else, he will absolutely not know what to do. And if I leave too much time to pass a couple of years and not put my hands on it, I personally will forget everything I did here. I will have to get back and watch my videos uh, <laughs> to remember what the fuck I did here. <laughs> At least to, to see a schematic of it. Uh, and yeah, this is very hard. This is the hardest and I have no idea how to, to make it in this stage that it is right now. Yeah, enough about this. So this is the plan. These are the final touches that I have to, to, to add. Oh, I can leave it as it is, of course. Uh, I didn't mention probably a box. <laughs> probably a box there. It should be mentioned. So uh, that's that's final, final, <laughs> when I will box it. Uh, but uh, this is the look and feel as it is right now. It's finished. Uh, and I am very proud of it. Yeah, all right. Uh, thank you very much, and see you later. Bye-bye from your favorite artistic artist, Mr. Q12.